This is my newest addition to Spring Lake Iron and Steel. Charles Wesley Works. It's the sintering department. And this sintering department is based upon the sintering plant that was at Walla Walla, Ontario, Canada. And it was uh, from a company that was known as Algoma, Algoma, excuse me, Algoma Ore Products. And they actually had two sintering plants. And this structure here is part of plant one. And this structure here is, is part of plant two. And it had a long, you know, uh, very tall smokestack coming out of there. And this structure here, which is plant two, it uh, actually had a roof line to look like that. And the thing about uh, this sintering plant is that uh, it was made to process a really cheap iron ore that was called sintite. And the, uh, the other one was hermatite, <coughs> both of those. But with the sintite, it had a lot of sulfur which made it very undesirable for the blast furnaces at Sault Ste. Marie, Canada for Algoma uh, steel. So what they would do, they would uh, heat that up, the iron ore, they would crush it and heat it up and uh, burn the sulfur out. The original structure actually had two smokestacks, but I only have one. And the original was, I figure, probably over 300 feet tall. And since there's 98 HO feet in uh, HO scale per foot, that means that the stack would be three feet tall, which would look kind of ridiculous. This is actually 198 feet HO uh, feet tall, and uh, it's a uh, inch and a half CPVC pipe, so two feet long. And so that's what is there. Now I'm going to tell you um, what happens in the sintering department over here. The sintering department with uh, Spring Lake Iron and Steel reprocesses waste products from the blast furnace. So when the gases come down uh, off the uh, down tube here, they go into the dust collector. Well, that dust has to go someplace. So that dust, which contains 10% iron ore, is uh, taken over to the uh, sintering department. And there you can see that over here. And then the, uh, the dust is uh, mixed in with, with crushed and powderized uh, fresh iron ore, limestone, and coke, and whatever else is needed for the blast furnace. And then through various processes on there, they um, water it down, they make a paste out of it and make a big uh, cake of center. And actually there's a, um, a furnace which directs the flames downward on, on the center on a conveyor, sort of like Burger King having it your way, okay? It's, it's that type of a furnace type of thing on there. And they will heat that up to the point that the coke almost ignites, but not quite. And then the cakes get break, broken off, and uh, they go by a conveyor, where they go through a bowl uh, mill, which is in this um, structure over here. That's what I say that it is. And then from there, um, it goes into uh, a hopper car, which where the locomotive is right now. And then it finds its way back over to the blast furnace. And in, in reality, is a modern blast furnaces use mainly a mixture of, uh, of center, 
uh, I guess 50% center and 50% uh, the other uh, ingredients, which is your uh, iron ore, your uh, limestone, and your coke. And uh, being powderized like that, it makes more uh, efficient uh, operation of your blast furnace. But anyway, uh, that's what that's what this does over here. Now the only thing I have to do now is work on the ingot stripping uh, department on there. The interesting thing about the while well, I'm looking at this stack here is that originally the plant had a much smaller smokestack, and it just so happens that around uh, Wawa, Ontario, it's kind of in a valley, and so what would happen is that the uh, pollution. Um, the, the sulfur dioxide would um, mix in and uh, create a smog layer around there that uh, created a, an acid rain. And so their idea was to build a couple of stacks to uh, get the uh, pollution up higher and disperse, uh, disperse it over a larger area. But unfortunately what had happened is that the acid rain from the sintering plant uh, killed off most of the vegetation around the Wall Wall area and today there's a dead zone around here where nothing grows it's just starting to come back. And this plant started in uh, as I recall in 1937 and it quit approximately 60 years later in 1997. But the damage had already been done and not only um, did it take care of the vegetation around the Wall Wall area it also did the same thing to the lakes. So the plant life started to die off in the lakes around there and uh, the fish had no plants to eat and the result was that uh, the uh, predator fish had no fish to eat so all the fish died off, all the plants died off and what you would end up with is these uh, really beautiful crystal clear uh, lakes that had were that way because nothing lives in them, they couldn't live in them. <clears throat> so anyway, um, when the plant closed down, uh, things are starting to come back. I don't know if the Canadian government decided to uh, fix the pH level in, in those lakes around there by dumping lime in there to uh, counteract the uh, acidic uh, water, uh, but that's probably what, what they did. So my my uh, steel mill here, the sintering department, um, that's the smoke, the emissions coming from the uh, the sintering department on there. So um, that's uh, how this works right now. And this is the piping that's very similar to the other ones that's uh, in plant two. The building actually looked like this. These two, this building here, and this building here, and then the conveyor belt, uh, the conveyor building there. Uh, I ripped that out of a two by six, so that's approximately an uh, inch and a half square, and I experimented around to get some bevels on there. And uh, anyway. That's the, uh, the centering department for Spring Lake Iron and Steel.